gentlemen, welcome to Downtime in the Ring, the podcast where we try to meet every single wrestler we can. And this week is a very special week. You, ladies and gentlemen, might have seen this man basically everywhere. He's been everywhere. You've seen him at AEW. You've seen him in WWE. You've seen him all over. I have this week, Chico. <laughs> thank you for having me what's Appreciate going you. on brother what's going on oh uh, you know just staying busy you know oh woke yeah up with my, woke up with my health so the whole day is a bonus you know i i i love it i love the hustle like i said you have been everywhere <laughs> sir <Just> you <laughs> you you've been everywhere you've been from you know, you you recently posted about it. You were the uh, the debuting match for the Creed Brothers. I was, and yeah, that was uh, yeah, it was about two years ago, a little over two years ago now. <laughs> and, and now you've also been uh, dissed on by the by Max Caster of the Acclaimed, and it was still it was still awesome, regardless, no matter what, no matter Thank what, you. no Thank matter you. what. So, how does like how long have you been wrestling is the best way to say it is that's the uh, best way to say it over 12 years now i started in may 2011 so over okay over 12 years so you have years and four months <laughs> a lot a lot under your belt how does that feel overall though uh it feels great you know I, like you said I, i'm very busy and i try to stay as busy as possible i've had probably over 500 live matches you know, throughout the country, not counting, of course, you know, training matches. So even though I've been doing it over 12 years, I've had, you know, enough matches where it's almost like I've been wrestling even longer than that based on how many matches I've had, you know, since I've started my career. But you know, I love staying busy. I love learning as much as I can and traveling and wrestling against, uh, you know, the biggest and the best to uh, to make myself better that way. So speaking of the biggest and the best, I'm I have so much jealousy because I love it. You seem like you regularly train at the dungeon. Well, the the new dungeon, I would have to say. Uh, we just call it the dungeon, but basically yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the new dungeon. The new dungeon, I guess you can call it. But yeah, we just call it the dungeon. <laughs> how did you how where what how did that all come about? Like nobody gets that opportunity so sir you must be something to get that opportunity <laughs> to go and do that so first and foremost this school is and i guess this question a lot i've had so many people ask me if i can get them in it is private it is invite only um we've had you know some people come by as like a one-off type thing but uh we have a small four group of people um and again it's invite only for usually it's like wwe contracted talent or uh personal close friends of TJ's and Natty's. So, you know, it's like a magician. Like you don't want too many people knowing uh, your secrets and, and things like that. So anyway, uh, I got in through a mutual friend. So probably about maybe seven ish, eight years ago, um, I trained with this guy by the name of Alex and he was from Wisconsin. So he trained with me for like maybe a month at a different wrestling school. And then um, all of a sudden I didn't see him for a while. So I'm on Facebook one day and I see uh, Alex posted a car selfie with with TJ. He's like on the beat on the way to the beach with TJ, and I'm like, "How's this guy know TJ? Like, what's the connection there?" I didn't think much of it, you know. And then all of a sudden, um, flash forward a little bit, I come to find out. So this my friend Alex trained originally with Hornswoggle, and then Hornswoggle and TJ Wilson are good friends. So that's how TJ and Alex became acquainted, and then Alex and TJ were the ones that uh, opened up Workhorse Fitness originally. And Alex is the one who helped uh, find the uh, the warehouse where the dungeon is at. So um, flash forward a little bit, and then uh, I did extra work with Alex. And then also TJ did a seminar at the 2.0 Wrestling School in Orlando back in 2018. So I got to do TJ's seminar. That's when I officially met TJ. And then after that, I would do extra work, you know, I mean, to this day, I do extra work all the time, but um, I've done extra work after that where I would see TJ backstage and I would say, hey, what's up? And shake his hand. 
And then so when the dungeon uh, opened its doors in, I would say, August of 2020, uh, prior to that, um, Alex, you know, asked TJ if, you know, he can train him even more. But with TJ's, um, you know, injury, TJ can't, I mean, he can, but he's not supposed to be doing like, you know, taking bumps or anything like that. So he basically told Alex, um, do you know anyone in particular? Like, who's the first person that comes to mind? If you can let anybody train at the dungeon, who would it be? And no. at least I'm assuming that's how the conversation went. From yeah. Alex and Alex recommended me. And again, so TJ already met me before from the seminar, plus seeing me doing extra work. He already knew of me. So he knew, you know, from what he saw that I was seemingly a, a safe reputable worker so that's how i got my invite and you know the way it was told to me was you know again this is very tight-knit it's very private like you're like <laughs> you got the golden ticket so to speak yeah. of being able to train here so yeah that's how i got my foot in the door so whenever you see like clips or videos if there's people that are there trained that you might not know uh they're probably a, a personal close friend of tj's and natty's like they don't let just any random person in there as a regular so that's long story short, it was a mutual friend that got me in, um, but I had to, you know, prove myself and, and prove that I was a safe, reputable worker. I, I pride myself on being um, respectful and professional, and I believe that's what kept me going this whole time. Because trust me, there's been people who have come in who didn't exactly fit the mantra of what the Dungeon stands for, and they're no longer there. So you do have to, you do have to be professional at all times and respectful, and, and you have to pull your own weight. So I, I pride myself on being able to do that. Oh, dude, that is so cool. It's like Club 33 <laughs> in Disneyland, bro. It's, <laughs> oh my God. It Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I don't take it for granted. That's for sure. I'm, we train uh, every week, but during the pandemic, we were training three times a week, every week. So I would make it a point to be there every single time. The only time I'd ever missed is if I was literally in another state for yeah. a show or doing extra work, you know, it's, it's never been a time when I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to take, take the night off. And no, like if I'm there. I don't care if it's what's going on. I don't care, you know, I'm there every single time we train. And if I'm not, it's because I have a very valid reason, like yeah. the time I got booked for dynamite or doing extra work or being on the state, but I'm just trying to be a sponge and, and be there as much as I can and learn as much as possible. Dude, that is so cool. Like I, I don't want to mark out, but that is, that's actually really cool. Like that's respectable. Oh my God. So, so what, so is the Alex you're talking about poor to you? Poor? No, no. Oh, so okay. This, okay. So ironically, um, Alex Porto owns the 2.0 wrestling school and that's yes. where TJ's seminar was back in 2018, which yes. is when I officially met TJ. Um, the Alex that is friends with TJ that I'm friends with, uh, his wrestling name, uh, I think he goes by Alex Light. It's A-L-E-X-X. -X. Oh, Light, okay. Like L-I-G-H-T, I believe. Um, I don't know if he's as active in the wrestling business. I believe he moved, I think he moved back to Wisconsin. Like, I, you know, I stay in touch with him here and there, um, but he doesn't train at the dungeon anymore. I think, you know, as far as I know, he's, he's still on good terms with them. He just, I think he moved to focus on his uh, career outside of wrestling. Um, but I'm very appreciative of him appreciative of him for getting me in so, so no it's not the same alex it's okay <laughs> see that's where i was confused i was like oh my god this this is small circles not yet not yet yeah <laughs> so how does it feel like having somebody say okay you're consistently being booked you know on these promotions or you're super busy like how does that feel to you as the veteran that you are Oh, thank you. I, I'll, you'll never hear me refer to myself as a veteran. I feel like that's a term that other people deem you. Yeah. I, I've seen, I've heard people refer to themselves as vets and they're not, you know. So yeah, yeah I appreciate you referring to me as that. Um, but no, I, to me, like the one thing I love about wrestling is like you get out what you put in. Like, you don't, even if you're not the best, if you work really hard and you treat people with, res with respect and you hustle and you don't give up, like it comes back to you multiple times over. So um i've done a lot of things that i'm very proud of and, and i still have many more things i wish to accomplish but no it's a, it's a great rewarding feeling when people tell me that but again i also feel like it's very reflective of the work i put in it's not like any of those things just fell in my pocket you know it's yeah i had to hustle and, and grind and hustle for work hard for each and every one of those things so 
it's a good feeling, but I also feel like it's also inspiring for other people because it's like, okay, like Chico's not the, the biggest or the best, but he works hard. And as a result, he's getting rewarded for it. So it's a great feeling. Yeah, that I will say this 100%. It's very inspiring to me. I've already, I barely started. I'm only a few sessions into my own journey. I, oh, nice. I yes. So it's, it's inspiring. I, I never know how to feel going into interviews like this with, you know, people of your stature. And I'm going to say that for somebody who still hasn't been booked and is still going through the beginning because you, you have, you've, reached multiple tops yes are you where you are no but that's probably what started getting you to where you are there mm -hmm. you always have that drive it seems like you are you've always want to be better there's always something that you can do more exactly they yeah. say it's, it's like an old saying like the day you you know everything is the day you quit because like you never learn everything even like that's another thing too is uh one thing that i love about the dungeon is you know natty and tj they always preach the importance of training like some people and I, I've seen this before in certain indie people as well. Like some people think once they start working shows that they don't have to train anymore. Like, oh, I don't have to train. I'm, I'm already booked for shows or I go to the gym all the time. Like, no, that's not the same thing. Even the best of the best. One person I want to give a shout out to and put over is um, Angelo Dawkins from the Street Profits. He's there literally every single week in training. You know, he never misses a training, never misses a class. And if you see his work on TV, you can see he's improving all the time and he was already solid to begin with but he's only gotten better and better by training at the dungeon and it's like here's someone who's signed to the wwe and he's taking time away you know from his family because he wants to get better and it's it's paying off so if someone on that level can make it a priority to train every week then there's no excuse why you know the average indie wrestler can do the same so yeah no it's very important to to hone your craft and to uh, put the time and effort into it and it's only going to pay off in the long run. That's so cool. Like the way that you just refer to these guys that you train with and just so, so chill about it. Yeah. Cause not you just know, him too. Yeah. Like even like, even not, not just uh, Dawkins, but even uh, Moose from, from impact wrestling. I mean, we have, we have B fab that's been putting a lot of time in as well. I mean, I'm just naming some of the many people that have come through the doors of the dungeon, but these are people like the best of the best, the top, you know, elite athletes that are again, making it a priority to get better. And it, it shows. So do you still feel like when you walk in there, do you still feel like a student at times? To me, like I'll always be a student, no matter what, from the day I started to the day, you know, I retire <laughs> or quit, whatever you want to call it. Uh, which I don't plan on giving up anytime soon, by the way. Yeah. So, um, but to me, you're all, you should always have that student mindset because you're always learning, even, you know, the top stars in the world are, they're always learning. So to me, I'm always a student from the second I wake up to the second I go to bed. <laughs> I, I love that. I really do. I respect that. That's awesome. Thanks. That's, that's the mentality that I'm going to try and keep as long as I can, no matter what, because that's that I, I love learning. That's why I started this. I love learning about everything, but exactly. we're, we're going to try and go away from wrestling for a bit because I have a, I have a big question, sir. Yeah. What are up with your acting chops, man? You love to be behind the camera. I like being behind the camera in front of the camera. Um, even like as a little kid, I, I grew up always loving entertainment. Like I always saw myself, even before I started watching wrestling, I saw myself being involved in entertainment in some capacity because I've always loved watching movies and of course playing video games, watching TV shows. Um, yeah. So one of the main reasons why I do acting is to, for experience for wrestling because they're very similar, more so than people think. Um, but yeah, I was on, uh, I was an extra for David Bakes Man, which is on the Oprah Winfrey Network. Yeah. We filmed it. Yeah. We filmed it back in 2018 and it didn't air on TV until about a year later. So uh it was kind of caught me by surprise when it finally did air because I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> um, I saw so that. that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I've done um sorry. No, I was gonna say you've done a commercial, haven't you? I've done a couple of commercials. There's one yeah. in particular that I did. Um I can't really talk about it because it hasn't aired yet. Um, but that should be airing hopefully soon. And then I aired, I filmed another one a few weeks ago for a different company. Same thing. I don't know if I'm supposed to be talking about that. So I won't mention the name of the company, but I've done two commercials. 
Um, I starred in a independent short film called Tank and Tina, where I played the role of Tank. Um, I did, of course, you know, the extra work in David Makes Man. I've done crowd work before a couple of times. So it's very enjoyable. And, and honestly, I love it. Again, it's a good experience for wrestling because you never know what role you might play. I mean, you always have to, sometimes you get thrown into the deep end where you have to uh, pull something out of you that you don't even know you have. So it's it's fun. It's a good experience. And that's it. <laughs> so going into that, speaking of wrestling, we're going to go back to that real quick. Yeah. And I'm going to ask, you don't have to give the, the exact answer, but I love putting people on the spot when they're in this position. Uh, are yep. we going to see you on AEW television anytime soon? Well, you mentioned earlier about uh, the rap that Max Caster did. Um, I was <laughs> that was uh, what is it three, the three or four weeks ago now? I want to say that was yeah. right before All In. Yeah, so say, yeah. Um, that was that was in Nashville, and so um, that was the last time I was on. I've been fortunate enough to have been booked, I believe. I think like five times in the last like three ish years the thing is with wrestling is you never know and i say this before like i'm like the where's waldo of professional wrestling you never know where when i'm gonna pop up next um, as of right now i don't have anything confirmed but with wrestling sometimes things pop up on short notice i mean i've gotten phone calls day of like hey can you come to the arena now and it's like i'm at work at my nine to five job and i'm like all right cool i'll be there in an hour you know so as of right now nothing's lined up but again you never know uh where or when so always i'm always ready and i hope my uh my fans are too <laughs> ah i'm gonna ah oh, now i'm gonna keep an eye out just a little bit yeah. just just if they're in your neck of the woods i'm gonna keep it well i can't even say that well that's just national. that yeah no i i travel some of the biggest opportunities i've had were literally in halfway across the country or in another state so yeah i, I had to i had to correct myself because you were in nashville <laughs> you weren't even nashville. anywhere close yeah that's Phil. I mean, when I wrestled on Monday Night Raw last year, I was in uh, Brooklyn, New York at the Barclays Center. When I got stunned by Kevin Owens, I was in Chicago, Illinois. So you never know. <laughs> I don't, I don't, to me, like, I'll travel anywhere and everywhere I can. I said this before jokingly, but I also mean it. If I was told that there's a, you know, an opportunity on the moon and I have to fly there, I would do it. <laughs> I would oh. literally go anywhere in the world. I would take a, I would take a shuttle to the moon if it meant, you know an opportunity for wwe or for AEW. have you or wrestled <laughs> anywhere else though like have you wrestled anywhere outside of the u.s not yet no i do have my passport so prior to the pandemic um i got my passport and i was in talks with i won't mention you know specifics but then of course with the pandemic um that slowed the process down but of course you know never say never so i do have my passport and uh, i do have some options out there but nothing's lined up at the moment. But again, in wrestling, you never know if, when, or where. So so what would you, looking back now, and mm. this is my favorite thing to do with anybody who's had about 10 plus years in the business, mm. they usually don't give themselves the flowers they deserve. What mm. would your younger self look think about you right now? The person that you are, you don't have to just be the wrestler, but the person that you are overall, what would your younger self say? Uh, for me, like when I was on Raw last year, I got to do a backstage segment with DX, you know, Shawn Michaels, Road Dog, and X-Pac. And then, you know, I went out to the ring and had a match on Monday Night Raw, which is probably one of the biggest, if not my biggest opportunity to date. And for me, like standing in that ring was a true full circle moment for me because I got hooked on wrestling by watching Monday Night Raw, by watching the Generation X. So um, I would definitely be proud of myself. And uh, I probably wouldn't believe it if I, if you showed me when I first started watching wrestling, if you showed me like a crystal ball and you're like, hey, that's you, like I would be <laughs> in awe. But of course, as time went on, like because of the work I've put in, because of the, the dedication I have and, and the mindset that I have, uh, I feel like it's it's aligned perfectly with what I've put into it. So my younger self would definitely be uh, shocked in a good way, but also it goes to show like, because the thing is in wrestling and in life, you never know what's around the corner. And no matter how hard you work, like there's truly no guarantees, especially in wrestling. So I would definitely be proud of myself, but I would also 
um, be inspired to uh, to never give up and to keep going like I've done this whole time. So what would you say to to younger wrestlers that are trying to make it into the business? And I know there's a lot of people. So the best way to say this is I like to think of my mindset as the bridge in between. You have the young wrestlers who are getting bookings and don't want to step on anybody's toes. You have, you know, yourself veterans who are willing to give information, but, you know, aren't trying to push it out there. You know, if you, Mm -hmm. if anybody wants it, they can come to you, but you're, you know, you're going to be content doing what you're doing. And then you have somebody like me who just kicked all the fear out and was like, I'm going to message all these wrestlers and start a podcast and learn about everybody. And that's how I'm going to do it. So what would you say to any wrestlers who want advice or want to pick your brain or what, what would you give them? Um, first and foremost is, and this is true, not just in wrestling, but in life in general, always be respectful to everyone always, no matter what. Um, I know some people will treat someone with respect based upon like their status in wrestling. But the thing is, you never know who's who. And you might see someone sweeping the floor at a, at a, an arena or at a show. And you might think, oh, I'll never see that guy again. Well, guess what? Five years later, he might be the one working in talent relations who has the power to book or unbook you. So um, always be respectful no matter what. You'll never, you'll never catch heat or go wrong treating people with respect that that goes not just in wrestling in life in general um always be respectful always be professional and the truth is most vets would be honored if you ask them for advice like you're not gonna as long as you're professional about it and you do it in the right manner um obviously if you see a vet and he's you know about to walk through the curtain and he's focused on his match like that's not the probably the time to do it but as long as you your approach is there and you're you do it in the right manner again most vets and most you know experienced workers would be honored and happy to help because you know that could be your future opponent and so they might you know want to help you get i mean most workers want to see you get better because they want competition in a good way they want the business to grow even after they're gone um of course you know there are people out there that you know might be a little too maybe selfish or competitive but even then like the worst they'll say is no and you know my my philosophy i've always used for myself is you know if you don't ask the answer is always no. So as long as you do it in a polite manner, they'll be happy to help you. And you'll never know what could come from that as well. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, you know, when it comes to even to reaching out to promoters, uh, messaging them or emailing them, like, you know, you're going to get a lot of times where they say no, or you might get a lot of times where they don't respond at all. I mean, to this day, I have Sometimes I don't get a response. The key, the key is, is not to get discouraged, to keep going. And, you know, if you're not where you want to be, like, that means you're not there yet. Put the work in, put, spend more time in the gym, you know, train more, do more promos. Like, no one knows everything. And that's the thing. There's always room for growth and improvement. Um, but also, too, wrestling is very, very competitive. There's thousands of people trying to go after the same dream that you are. So you have to be realistic with yourself, too, and say, okay, like, what quality or qualities do I have that they don't or vice versa? What am I missing? You know, you have to imagine you're in a, a giant building with 10,000 people and only one might get an opportunity. What makes you different from them? You got to find your niche and you got to, you know, find that one thing that separates you. That's the thing. We all have our strengths. We all have our weaknesses in wrestling, play up to your strengths. And if you're not good at something, you know, you get good at it or don't do it. Um, but that's the thing. There's only one of you. There's what, seven and a half billion people in the world. There's only one of each person. So find what makes you special and unique and, you know, exploit that, turn that up to 11 or even more. I like that. I really do. I like that because of the way that you, the way you said that, that was the first promo I had, I had to give <laughs> on initiation day. They, they, uh, we had a blow up session and then they were like, all right, it's uh, you were in a 20 minute match. This is the end of the show. Cut a promo. And so that's where I was like, well, I, I have this where I'm already talking to people. Unlike the rest of my class. 
this oh. is the <laughs> this is the step that I'm gonna make to put my name out there so that when I am able to get booked, people will already know me. So exactly. I like that I like that you said that. Um thank you. But also too, like don't be if I'm sorry to cut you off, but like yeah, no, you're don't, good. Be, don't be afraid to make mistakes too. Like take chances, oh, yeah. especially especially in the, in the indies. That's the time to try different things. Like some things work and some things don't. And sometimes, you know, the best ideas come by accident or when you're not trying. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen me do the whole when people chant Chico sucks. That was a like a one off thing that kind of just took on a life of its own. You know, I stepped through the curtain and fans were chanting Chico sucks because I was the bad guy and I was uh, I know the announcer personally. So I went up to him and whispered in his ear, tell him not to chant Chico sucks. Just popped into my head. And he did it and it kind of took on a life of its own. And so now it's like a reoccurring thing. So yeah, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to try different things, especially in the Indies, because that's the time to do it. And, you know, worst thing that can happen is you fail, but guess what? You, you learn from that, you grow from that. And it makes you a better performer. So, you know, fail forward, fail, you'll fail 99 times, but that one time is when you'll succeed. And that's the one thing that could carry you on to that next, next level. So do you feel that people, especially young wrestlers, try to be prof more professional than what their years give them because they're afraid to fail? Um, I think it just depends on the person. Like some people are sometimes I see guys that are like new in the business that are a little too confident. Then I've seen guys that have been in the business for years that are still, you know, shy and hesitant. So it just depends on the person, really. Um, but that's the thing. And also too, like years don't always match up with like, for example, you might meet someone that says, Hey, I've been wrestling for 10 years. Well, there might be somebody out there that's six months in that might be running circles around them when it comes to their look or their, their work rate. So um, to me, it's just, like I said, going back to what I said earlier, just, you know, everyone should just always be respectful to everyone, no matter what. And, you know, go from there. Okay. So the biggest thing that I wanted to learn, is where did Chico Adams come from? Where, 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 <laughs> yeah, where did, where did all of that come about? If you're, if you're comfortable talking about it, cool. Oh, if not, it's all good. No, that's fine. So the, the nickname Chico, uh, my sister started calling me that when I was 10. So she was learning Spanish in school and she learned that Chico means boy. So when she came home from school, she started calling me Chico. And I don't know what it was about the name. I just felt this like this connection to it. And it was shortly after I started like really getting into wrestling. So I knew at that time that I wanted to be a wrestler. And I thought, you know, I'm going to use the name Chico. I'm going to combine the name Chico with my real last name. And that's where the name Chico Adams came from. Um, but growing up, like I mentioned before, I love watching movies and I've always loved the villains and I've always loved the bad guys. So I, I always envisioned myself being the bad guy and so i've always said before like the chico adams persona that's just me the real life persona that's the real life person turned up to 11 that's not me you know pretending to be a character or trying to be somebody or acting like somebody that's that's me with the volume turned up you know like for example if you go to someone at their nine to five job and they're dealing with you know guests and customers of course they're gonna put on that facade and act all nice and smile but then you know when we're around our closest friends or our family, like a lot of us act differently because we're confident. That's, you know, for me, when I walk through that curtain, that's when I feel the most confident. And that's when I can truly bring out my real life persona. So that's me. I can be loud. I could be obnoxious. I can be annoying. Um, I can be goofy. And all of that is wrapped up into who Chico Adams is from the second I walk that curtain to the second I walk back. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's, that's, I love, I love hearing when people, talk about that when they talk about you know who they are on the indies or if it's just them turned up to 11 mm. which is a chris i i heard that for the first time through chris jericho so i love when i hear people say that is that yeah. they just turn themselves up to 11 so Absolutely. as we begin to wind down definitely we're gonna have to have you on for a longer episode once we will plan it out more and more because I, I have more questions for you i want to pick your brain more and just hear more of your like road stories like your okay. everything you've gone through so let hopefully we can have you on again later on in the future and just get a longer formatted episode but 
if you could leave one piece of advice, it doesn't have to go to young wrestlers. It doesn't have to deal with wrestling at all. One piece of advice that you would want to be remembered for. What would that be? Um, just my determination, never letting um, anyone or anything step in my way. I think like a lot of people look at me and like, oh, Chico's a, a really nice guy. But the thing is, is like my determined, I've always been extremely driven and motivated. I've never let anyone or anything step in the way of my dreams and my goals. When I first started, I had people, vets, if you will, say to me, oh, I thought you were going to quit by now. Or I can't believe you're, I can't believe you showed up to training. I thought you were done already. And it's like, you clearly don't know me very well, because if I want something, I'm very relentless. You know, I, I'll i attack it head on, and, and there's nothing that I'll let step in my way. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And so, you know, when I was 10 years old, and I told everybody that I was going to be a professional wrestler, I think a lot of people, you know, they laugh. And that's it's not uncommon for a 10-year-old to have this crazy big dream. But I knew what I wanted at the time, and I knew in my heart that's what I wanted. And so despite going through certain, you know, uh, adversities and, and setbacks and challenges. I always let that instead of using that as a road bump, I use that as a building block to and a stepping stone to get even better and further ahead in my career. So mainly just my determination and the fact that uh, I've always treated everyone with respect and I've always got every opportunity from hard work. I've had people say, oh, you're so lucky that you've done this. You're lucky that you're training here. You're lucky that you're doing that. And it's like, I'm very fortunate, yes, and I'm very appreciative, but none of that have ever come from from luck. It's always come from hard work. And sometimes we do like certain shows or certain opportunities that you might think like, oh, I wasted my time doing that. To me, there's no waste of time because even if you do something and you fail or even if you do something and you feel like you wasted your time, you can learn and grow from each and every opportunity, good and bad. So, you know, if it's an indie show and there's, you know, five people out in the crowd, like, hey, you can you can learn from that. You can use that opportunity to get better. Not every opportunity has to be a, a, a win. You know, there's many L's out there, and and sometimes those are the ones that uh, define who you are, and, and those are the ones that help you grow the most. So I've always made the most of every opportunity, and through again just treating people with respect, being professional, always always being ready, and always being making myself available for anything that comes my way. Um, just putting myself out there, not being one to ever sit back and wait for an opportunity. Anyone who knows me will tell you that I'm not one to, I never sit back and, and wait for anything. I go out there and if I want something, I attack it head on and I get it. I love that. I keep saying I love that, but I do. I, <laughs> I, 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 I've met somebody with a similar mindset because I could have just sat back and just been like, you know what? I tried it before the pandemic. I couldn't do it, but I got the opportunity. I want to learn how to do this. I want to have a match. I would love to meet all of these people, not just through a computer screen, but face to face. Definitely want to give you a hug, dude. Cause you deserve it. You need your oh, flowers, man. You do. You. I, just don't I know. Uh, I know I'm your guest, but if you don't mind me asking, like, where, where do you train? Or where, so where do you I, am, I am training currently with off the ropes in albuquerque new mexico uh my trainer is gino told you so rivera <laughs> it's funny you say that. as soon as you said uh new mexico my, my i swear my first thought was he must be training with gino i never so it's funny i never met gino personally um but we're uh we're friends on social media and we chat sometimes so please tell gino that chico said hello and by the way you're in good hands uh, really I, I believe it. I believe it. I'm I'm excited. He's tough, but I love it. Every yeah, every <laughs> every time, every time he's never. I've never felt like I it I wasn't belonging there. I love it. So that's <laughs> awesome. That's cool. I'll tell Gino. Actually, yeah, he'll please. probably listen. He usually listens to these, so he'll probably he'll just hear it. Awesome. Well, like I said, you're in good hands. So keep keep doing your thing. <laughs> All right. So where can everybody catch you on the social medias? So I'm on Twitter and Instagram at the Chico Adams. I'm also on Facebook. I think it's facebook.com slash Chico dot Adams. Or if you just search Chico Adams, I'm assuming I'm the only one out there with a uh, Facebook profile like this. So if not, I might have a fake one out there. I don't know. But as far as I know, there's only one Facebook profile. I also have my own YouTube channel. Um, if you anyone out there is looking to email me, it's book 
chico adams at gmail.com um again instagram twitter if you uh send me a dm if you have any questions or anything like that any booking inquiries and uh or just general questions. I'm always happy to, to help any, any way I can. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this was a fun episode. Like I said, we are going to have to have him back on, hopefully with my co-host next time, because my co-host would probably love to know a bunch of road stories. And we will see y'all in the next video.